I wanted to make a quick video just showing you guys some of the things that I did to ensure that I had a speedy recovery. Um, a few people at work have asked me about this, so I figure I'll just go ahead and make like a quick video. But there's a few main things. Um, number one, months before your surgery, start taking vitamin E. Get your vitamin E levels up. Um, collagen. If you don't already take collagen, start taking it. At least 10 grams a day, but 30 grams is good for like recovery. So after the surgery, definitely start taking 30 grams. And if you can afford it like weeks before the surgery, there's no reason not to take 30 grams also. It could possibly help, but at least 10 grams. Um, one of the most important things though is vitamin D. So many people, I think like the majority of Americans are deficient in vitamin D. And the threshold for deficiency is like under 25 or under 30, which, so if you're like 31, they're gonna say, oh, you're fine. But you really want it to be higher than that. You want it to be at least 50. So if you haven't had a blood test for vitamin D, you might wanna get that just to see what your status is. Um, pretty much all, always, it's, it's pretty low. When I talk to people, people about vitamin D, they get their results and it's like 17. I would not like to go into surgery with a vitamin D that low, but doctors aren't gonna check that. That's something that you're gonna have to do on your own. And when you optimize your levels, you're basically just setting yourself up to heal faster. You're optimizing your whole body. So vitamin D, uh, D3, make sure it's D3 and not D2. D3 is more absorbable. Um, if I'm low, I'm just gonna tell you what I do um, because I'm not a doctor and I can't like prescribe anything. So what I would do according to studies that I would I have seen is that I would take 10,000 IU of vitamin D every day, really up until surgery. There, There's like pretty much no toxicity for vitamin D. It's extremely rare and you just have to stop taking it if you're vitamin D toxic, which is, like I said, very, very rare. So I did get my levels checked months before and I went into surgery at a good place, definitely. I think I was about 50, like right at about 50, but ideally that's where you need to be, like between 50 and 70. So super important, but it does take a while. So you need to start like months before your scheduled appointment. Another thing to note is that you need to take it with food. Um, it only absorbs well if you eat it with fat. So make sure you eat it with some kind of fat in your food. Another thing that is concerning for a lot of people is iron status, and this is going to possibly keep you from even getting surgery if it's too low. So they're gonna look at what's called your hemoglobin and your hematocrit, and that's basically like how many red blood cells you have, how much uh, blood you have, <laughs> basically. Um, they're, gonna, they're basically checking to see if you um, are anemic. And if you are anemic, usually the treatment is iron. Um, a lot of women are very deficient in iron. Every month we waste blood, which leads to lower hemoglobin and hematocrit. And to replenish that, you need iron. And a lot of people do not need, they don't eat enough iron. So the best source of iron is not spinach, it's red meat that has the most absorbable form of iron. You want the heme iron in red meat. So eat some beef, eat a steak, like frequently before your surgery. And you're not gonna have to worry about a low iron count. If you are vegan or vegetarian, you definitely might have to worry about lower hemoglobin and hematocrit. It might not be in the range that the surgeon would like for you to go into surgery. And the cure for that is iron. That's why you see all these girls taking iron pills before their surgery, but you don't really need to take a bunch of iron pills, just eat some steak. It absorbs very well. If you do take iron pills, make sure you take them with vitamin C, um, like take the iron pill with some orange juice because that helps the absorption. I myself did not take any iron at all. Um, I don't have any problems with anemia 
or low hemoglobin or hematocrit. Actually, my levels are like higher than normal usually. They're actually pretty much always in the uh, um, in, in the top range. Um, and that's probably because I eat a lot of red meat. So that wasn't something that I worried about, but that is a major thing that could possibly prevent you from getting surgery. So just to reiterate, iron, vitamin D, vitamin E helps, you know, it's good for healing, and collagen. And you're going to want to take the collagen before and after the surgery. Um, I mean, you can really take everything before and after the surgery, but after the surgery, you're going to want to up your collagen to 30 grams a day, ideally, if you can afford that. So best of luck on your BBL journey, and if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments.